I'm Ashley. And I'm Brooke. And you're here with us on A Teachers Who Talk Crime Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. We had a whole, like, vent session. A whole Um, vent session. For, like, a good 30 minutes. Prior to recording. Yeah. We did. We always do this. We always do this. We were unleashing. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to unload with your friend. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, you do. Feels nice to get it off your spirit. Yeah, because sometimes Mm -hmm. the education system is on fire in a dumpster with a tornado headed for it. Mm Mm-hmm. You just got to just get in that swimming. dumpster with the raccoons and mm-hmm. just hold on tight. Bunker down. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that's where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> that's where everything is with that. Yes. That's where yeah. we're at. But yeah. anywho. We're back again. Hope you guys are great. You know, how are you guys doing? How's your school year? Yeah. How is yours a dumpster on fire with the tornado headed towards it? Hope not. But if it is, you know, welcome to the dumpster. Welcome to the party. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Great A dumpsters. Pretty Mm. nice in here. Yes. Mm, Had a burp. Um, Mm, Had a burp. (laughs) Yeah. Been very. Burpy mm. lately. Mm-mm-mm. Um, yeah, I keep saying um because, like, we just kind of got it all out before we yeah. pressed record. Yeah, sorry that you know you guys weren't here. Yeah, for it. <laughs> I'm going to Mardi Gras this weekend. Um, I'm really excited mm. to catch some beads and moon pies and whatnot. Is that the place where the guy was like? Pretty in the face, pussy super dead. Yes, yes, that would be him. Fun. I hope you see him out there. Uh, yeah, him. yeah. Because he's still apparently happy thinking when my he be mm-hmm. my, yeah mm-hmm. my dog. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna do that. We have Mary made a schedule, so I think we have two parades that we're a going schedule. to schedule. Well, parades are like by schedules. And so, like, there's one that the kids really like. It's, like, the dog parade or something. So, like, everybody uh-huh. brings their dogs. Uh-huh. And then the other ones, like, the crazier parades, the wi- the wilder ones are at night. And so, um, we're going to go to two of those. Should we get a Mm-hmm. Oh, Casey loves the Marty party. Not the Marty party. Casey would be like, I- where'd you get that? The Marty party. I'm they crying. throw stuffed animals, beads, frisbees, balls. Oh, yeah. That's fun. Mm-hmm. I Marty love party. That. Marty party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to go to the Marty party this weekend. I can't wait to see them snaps. Well, not snaps. Yeah. I'm not on Snapchat no more. But to see the story. Yeah. So I'm excited. See. Yeah. Mine's, my weekend's not going to be that exciting. Um. I got CrossFit on Saturday, so yeah. I don't know what that's going to look like. Um, and then I will just be here with my children. There you go. Yep. Got to eventually mm-hmm. clean up this dumpster of an apartment, but... We're just all riding dumpsters, I guess. Yeah, if anyone, you know, a cleaning lady, you know, anyone want to shake a poor sinner's hand um, and mm-hmm. help your girl out? Because I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Uh, The girl is tired. Yeah. The girl is sleepy. I feel you. Mm -hmm. Like, this is... My wife told me I got eight hours last night, and I was like, Eight hours of sleep? Yeah, and I was like, I told you I would... What I I can't... You literally... When I tell Mm -hmm. you I fell asleep, like, when I woke up, my watch was like, you got got full eight hours of sleep. And I was like... I never wear my watch still tired. Because I'm always afraid it's going to be, like, dead. And I won't have but it for I the charge, gym. Oh, but you don't, you don't have as long as a drive. So I charge mine on the way to work. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. That's smart because you're not really so getting I don't no wear steps. It. you just, you know, there. You're just in the car. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I always charge mine at night, but like I couldn't tell you the last time I got eight hours of sleep. Yeah. Couldn't but it shows you. you. It shows you on like on your app on your phone when you wear your watch. Like it shows you where you woke up, where you were in deep sleep. My I job like would be it. like, you got six hours of sleep. You got five hours of sleep because I'm up to You never minutes. slept. <laughs> <laughs> you never slept. Are you sure you were alive? You were still awake. Like today, <laughs> I had to go get coffee because when I woke up this morning, my body was exhausted. Like I woke up like, nah, bro. Mm-hmm. Like my kids were even like, are you okay? I was like, let me just finish this coffee. Yeah. Let me just finish it, please. Stay there. Don't come near me. I just, Miss Brent. Yeah. Everything's fine, baby. Just let Miss Drink, Miss Brent, drink a coffee, please. Mm -hmm. Because it's that type of morning. Mm. Feel you. Mm -mm -mm. But I I will say that now when I go to sleep, I listen to manifestation YouTube videos. Ooh. And they're just changing the girl's thought process, okay? Okay. Okay. They have a bunch of different themed ones, you know. It is just, Really changing this thing right here. Okay. hmm Wow. Mm-hmm. I might need to do that because my dreams have been very vivid lately. And, like, they are all night dreams. Like, I, last night, because if we don't watch TV, like, so the nights we watch TV, I dream about whatever we watched on TV. So we started Griselda or Griselda or something. Who Griselda? Um... The only person that El Chapo was ever afraid of, some woman, drug dealer, cartel person. Oh. But, yeah, so we started that. So I dreamed of her all night. Like, I dreamed, like, I was dealing drugs with her. We were You were dealing? Oh, yeah, we were in, like, but all night, vividly, right? And then last night, we didn't watch anything because I was texting Ashley. And I was like, look, I'm about to, I'm about to zone out. Like, I'm dead to the world. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have anything in my head. So I dreamed of slope all night, finding the slope of a line all night. Yeah. That's not an enjoyable dream. It's not. It's <laughs> not. That's not an enjoyable dream. No, I know. I know. Yeah. Okay. Very, that's different. Very vividly. That's. Like, was it just, like, you drawing in the dream? No, okay, or like- so I was laying on my stomach at one point. I do remember this part. I was laying on my stomach at one point, and you know how you pull your leg up? Like, you like you know how women lay when they get cramps? So you lay on your stomach, you pull your leg up? Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. You, you, you hike it up. Okay. Yeah. So I pulled my leg up, and when I pulled my leg up, my leg was on a pillow, right? So it rubbed up on the pillow. And in my dream, it was the line. As my leg moved, it was the line. And then I was like, what's the slope of what I just did? How many degrees did I just go up this pillow? I, I, know, I, I vividly remember that. I can't tell you the last thing I dreamed. I haven't dreamed yeah. in a very long time. So I feel like dream. I might need some meditation videos. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know. <laughs> Wow. I yeah. am. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's, I mean, that's different. So we went from drug dealing to finding the slope of a line. Hey. D- d- you get the best of both worlds. <laughs> Bro. <Bruh. laughs> I cannot. Oh, I Hannah cannot. Montana said it best. I cannot. I cannot. Mm-mm. So. Mm. Wow. Love that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Mm. Well, um, do you have anything else? Uh, no, I think you took the cake with that. Uh, honestly. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really okay. think there is any way to top what you just said. So we could okay. just um we could just get into our estudiante estrella. Yes. Yeah. So this week's the Estudiante Estrella is nutmeg with a lot of G's. Nutmeg, okay. With a lot of G's. Yeah, we're a little past the season, but it'll be all right. You know, that's okay. You know. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's a five star. Pew, 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 pew. 
Period. Pew! Maybe. Yeah, you messed me there. Okay. I was like, meh, 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 you know. Yeah. <laughs> and Nutmeg with a lot of G's. Review is titled, One of My Faves. Thanks, girl. And it reads, First of all, thank you for being teachers. It's a thankless job sometimes, and you both do so much. I'm not a teacher, but my sis-in-law and two best friends are, and I know how challenging the profession can be. Second, this podcast is so dang good. I worked with adolescents for six years, and it's fascinating to hear your perspective on these cases. Y'all bring a lot of attention to important issues that greatly impact kids. Thanks for taking the time to make this podcast. I hope 2024 is your best year yet. Meg whoop, whoop. H. You know, Meg, I have a feeling that this is our year as well. I do too. I'm having I a feeling. I do too. I got a feeling. A feeling. Okay. Ooh. That tonight, well, this year's gonna be <laughs> a good year. Good year. That this yep. year's gonna, it is for us. Yep. I mm-hmm. can just feel it. We got this Teach Your Heart Out cruise. We do. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We do. We got other things too. We can't tell y'all yet. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like we're grinning, but you guys don't know about it yet. So. Yeah. Yeah. Things are just happening, you know? So you you're right, us. Meg. You're right. You are right, Nutmeg. <laughs> you're right, Nutmeg. Gig, 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 gig. Uh-huh. Um, you're right. But Nutmeg, gig, 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 gig. Mm-hmm. I thank you so much for your review. This gold stars for you, baby. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're going to get into it. So mm-hmm. sit down. Shut up. The murder is about to begin. Ahora. When it comes to Kenzie Sharilla, the phrase hell on wheels takes on a completely different meaning when it ever did before. As she was convicted on murder charges for purposely crashing her car into a building while driving at 100 miles per hour. This accident left her seriously injured while her boyfriend and his friend were killed at the (gasps) scene of the... Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Mackenzie Sherilla was born July 2000 in Strongsville, Ohio, and she grew up in a close-knit community. Her life overall was pretty mundane, that is, until the accident, according to sources. She attended Strongsville High School, and it was there she met her boyfriend, Dominic Russo, and an older boy who was quite charming and had looks to go with it. This high school, the one where the two sweethearts met, was the same high school Mackenzie was still attending when the accident occurred. Mackenzie loves social media, as do most teens, but Mackenzie had a very telling online persona where she often bragged about her boyfriend, Dominic, and her constant drug use. Multiple po- posts show Mackenzie behind the wheel of her car with a joint in her mouth, along with other posts where she brags about being able to do a lot of drugs and not dying. And when I tell y'all it's a joint, like it is a Snoop Dogg sized joint, just in her mouth while she's driving. How old is she? 17. What year does this happen? This accident happened in 2022. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, the reference of being able to do a lot of drugs and not dying comes from a TikTok she posted where she is under the influence of drugs and she is bragging about being able to do a lot of drugs with the caption and not dying. Yeah. Miss Ma'am. Right? Miss Ma'am. Right? You want to get a yeah. job someday? Yeah. You know, make 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 a name for yourself. See? Pe- people mm. look at your social media. They do. They do. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You you got to got to do better than that girl. Yeah. Yeah. Got to do better. It has also been said that Mackenzie was not really the nicest person to associate with. One source even said that she was one of the school's bullies and often picked on other kids. The same source stated that Mackenzie could be heard telling people they should commit suicide when they were depressed. So needless to say, this particular source paints Mackenzie as a narcissist, and we'll just kind of leave it to you to decide. 
Granted, this is one person's opinion of McKenzie, but we'll let you decide what you think. I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Y'all know what I'm thinking. Mm. So what led us here to today to talk about Mackenzie Sharilla? Well, on July 31st, 2022, around 5.30 a.m., 17-year-old Mackenzie Sharilla accelerated her Toyota Camry and drove it straight into a brick building without tapping the brakes even once. The wreck occurred in the Cleveland suburb of Strongville, Ohio, and the police were on this scene approximately 45 minutes later when a 911 call was placed by a witness. Upon arrival, they located the car and described it instantly, saying, quote, it had severe damage and full airbag deployments. The scene was hard to look at, and the three victims in the Toyota had to be extracted from the vehicle with force by the firemen and police. Wow. The three occupants found and identified inside the vehicle were unconscious, not breathing, and trapped inside the car behind glass, metal, and plastic. Once the rescue team was able to get inside the car, they found Dominic Russo, 20 years old, and Davion Flanagan, 19 years old, lifeless, with no hope of being saved. Wow. Mackenzie, however, was alive behind the wheel of her car, but was immediately rushed slash life flighted to Metro Health in Cleveland for emergency treatment and care where she remained for some time due to her injuries from the wreck. Mm. To put it in perspective how bad this wreck was, Mackenzie's Prada slipper was stuck to the gas pedal when they pulled her from the car. And as you can see on our screen here, we'll put the wreck up, um, just a picture of the car itself. If you are watching on YouTube, you can see it here on the screen. And if you cannot, we will have that photo on Instagram for you. Wow. When Mackenzie came to at the hospital and was beginning her recovery journey, it was evident to the doctors that she had no memory or recollection of the crash and the death of her boyfriend and his friend. She had to be told in the hospital for the first time that she had killed her boyfriend and his friend, Davion Flanagan. Wow. And you don't remember any of it? Nothing. None of it? Yeah. That's crazy. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. And I could not find more on her memory loss. Like, I don't know if it was something that they said she would get back later. I don't know if it was a traumatic brain injury that just wiped that memory from her her slate. I don't know. Um, But I do know that they bring up her memory loss in court. So it was still not, she had not gained her memory back by the time she had gone to court. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if that tells you anything. Got you. After the removal of the victims and McKenzie herself, officers did search the car and found marijuana in the car and later were able to confirm that the teens had been at a friend's house smoking weed prior to McKenzie getting behind the wheel and causing the deaths of two innocent people. This was also confirmed when they drug tested McKenzie at the hospital and it was determined that she had THC in her system that exceeded the legal limit in Ohio. Wow. Now, Did this play a role in the wreck? Or could it be something far more sinister? I just, I mean, there's more. Yes. Right? I just, I feel like with what we have now, I'm just curious, like, what the motive would be to do this, knowing that you would also be injured as well, going at that Mm -hmm. level of high speed. Um, I feel like, she might possibly have some thoughts of unaliving herself if that Mm -hmm. was to be the case. But if not, Mm -hmm. that doesn't really explain why she would speed into a building without Mm -hmm. breaking. Because then the other other thing I'm thinking is like she's passed out. Like maybe she passed out and like her foot is now weighted and then it just Mm -hmm. goes forward. Those are the the only two things I got right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Which we've seen, I mean... It is very probable that a car malfunctions or yes. someone passes out. I mean, it has happened. Mm-hmm. So don't, you know, could it be? Sure. Mm-hmm. 
An investigation took place which revealed that McKenzie was not just out hanging with her friends and later her car malfunctioned, causing the crash like the story was first told. Evidence was found to support the idea that McKenzie drove around for an hour that night until she believed there would be limited witnesses around in an area she did not regularly go to, but weirdly enough had visited days before the crash took place. This led investigators to deep dive into the relationship between McKenzie and Dominic. So what you're saying is she drove around. There's evidence that she was driving around in this car. Mm-hmm. but For over wh- an hour after they left the house. Okay, but where's the link to she was in an area looking for, looking for an area where there's not a lot of um, people? Like, how did that come into play? Like, what, well, is it a secluded area? That- no, they're saying because, like, she drove around till 5.30 in the morning where there are a limited amount of people out. On, like, Got you. Copy. That's why she drove around for an hour. Understood. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now, they had proof that she had been to this area the week before on her GPS when they ran all of the car stuff, like the mechanics Mm-mm. and stuff. They also had proof that this was not an area that her car regularly went to. Understood. Hmm. So why would she be so, up there? Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. While peeking into the couple's toxic relationship, they discovered Mackenzie and Dominic had been dating for three to four years by the time the accident occurred. And Mackenzie had actually spent majority of the relationship living with Dominic and his family at his home. Why? Now, it was never clear why Mackenzie lived with Dominic because we do know Mackenzie's mom is present in her life and we'll talk about her later. But to each their own, I guess, when you're in love and you're a teenager, I don't know. Mackenzie was still in high school most of this relationship. Hmm. So I don't know why she lived there. Yeah, I'd definitely be curious to know why because yeah, not my child. No, you got Mm -hmm. a roof right here. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can go see him, but we ain't staying over. Mm -mm. No sleepovers. Yeah. Mm -mm. None of that. Mm Mm-mm. Dominic's family, however, was not very fond of Mackenzie, even noting to the fact that she would often fight with Dominic's mother along with Dominic himself. First of all, ain't no child coming up in my house and fighting with me. Thank you. Why you was she staying there? Go. The minute you disrespect me, go home. You got to go. Go home. Because you're not paying no bills. Mama. You eating mm-hmm. up my food, using up my, my hot water. Mm-hmm. Drinking up all my juice. You got to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got to go. Mm-mm. I'm with you. I had the same thought. Mm-mm. Yeah. Dominic's brother went on to say that the couple would break up often and were always arguing and violently fighting. Most who knew the couple said that Dominic was the one being abused by McKenzie, both emotionally, physically, and verbally, bringing up multiple times friends have witnessed McKenzie putting her hands on Dominic to the point of punching and slapping him. But from the other side of it, it was cited that both Dominic and Mackenzie fought each other often and would hit below the belt with their comments and degrading name-calling. Wow. So obviously, because of the tragedy that took place, people are singling out Mackenzie, saying Mm -hmm. that she is the one that is the main aggressor. And that very well could be true. I am not saying that is not true. But other sources did say, like, they would witness this couple fight, and it was ugly. Okay. Wow. When this couple fought. They also uncovered that Mackenzie had allegedly threatened to crash her car while the couple were in it, while the couple were having a heated argument prior to the crash taking place. This particular incident took place two weeks before the crash that took two lives. During this event, Dominic called his mom to pick him up as he just wanted out of the situation. But instead, a friend ended up coming to get him, but testified that they heard McKenzie say, while on the phone with Dominic, I will crash this car right now. And when the friend arrived to the car to get Dominic, he witnessed McKenzie get out of the driver's side, go to the passenger side, and begin to beat on Dominic which all got brought up in court documents. Okay, well, that takes away one of my theories. Yes. Okay, Mm -hmm. all right. 
Police also found multiple threats made towards Dominic made by McKenzie a month before the accident when a video surfaced from Dominic's phone where McKenzie can be heard degrading Dominic, threatening him, and damaging his property, all because he would not let her into his house. She was heard on that recording making threats about keying his car, kicking down his front door of his home, his mother's home, his mother's home, kicking down the front door of his home and was told she he would regret it. You're going to effing regret this. This is going to be the worst effing mistake of your life, et cetera, et cetera. I would be curious to know more about Miss Ma'am here. I would be curious to know more about her. I feel like we don't have enough information about her backstory so I could really make an accurate depiction of like what I personally think is wrong. But she sounds unhinged at -hmm. this point. She sounds very unhinged. Mm -hmm. I would wonder if she had any mental issues, possibly. Mm -hmm. Undiagnosed. I don't don't know. But like, you are very, very physically abusive to this man. And you're very pretty. Like she, you know, and I know that that looks don't don't matter, but like all three of these people were very attractive. But like, you're a pretty girl and like you're acting like a psycho bunny. Mm -hmm. Like why? There's no need for any of this. No. There's absolutely no need for you to do the things that you're doing, especially when you are staying in this man's house. Yes. You are staying in this man's house. you. Being disrespectful, rude to his mother. To yeah. his mother? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. No, ma'am. Not I said the fly. <laughs> Not I said a cat. hmm But upon investigation and before charging McKenzie with anything, the most damning evidence surfaced. Oh, my gosh. Yep. And this was a surveillance video of the wreck itself. No, 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 no. That no. took place in real time. Time. And what it showed was McKenzie going a normal speed and out of nowhere, accelerating to the floor toward a building without one time hitting her brakes until the crash can be heard and seen on video. It was also confirmed by the forensic mechanic Mm -hmm. who looked into the data recorder and said that it clearly showed moments before the crash, the accelerated pedal was pushed all the way down to full capacity with no application of the brake. I don't think I've ever pushed the pedal of my car down that low in my life. No. And granted, I speed sometimes, okay? Yeah. If any of you Delaware cops are listening, hey, you got my money. Yeah. You got my money because y'all just pulled me over in the, in the, in, the, in the, got me, got me, got me, got me good. Um, Fair and square. You won't get me again. Um, but that's crazy. Yeah. That means that John's, and granted, it's a Toyota Camry. I'm assuming, you know, the acceleration isn't the fastest in there, you know? So we're probably not going zero to 100 in no. 60 seconds, Mm-mm, right? But, but still. Yeah. You could get up there pushing it like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, by the time of the impact, it was what, 100 miles per hour? It was 100 miles per hour. That's wild. If you were going a normal speed on a residential road, you're probably going what? 40? 40. 40, 35? But then it's like the video is, you're going 40, 40, 40, and then just boom. You saw it? Oh, yeah. I watched it. Yeah. Oh, man. And it, I mean, it's literally just like she's driving in a neighborhood. I mean, not a neighborhood, but like residential speed, right? And then it's out of nowhere. She just like pushes the accelerant. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And she has no recollection. None. Huh. Yeah. Huh. I mean, I know it's a real thing. A hundred percent. I know amnesia, especially with the impact. It's right. definitely possible. But like, my mind's always like, well, what happens if she remembers one day? Like, does she tell people she remembers? Oh, no. Or she's got to she... stick with this for the rest of her life. 
to that's, keep her to keep her a story straight, she would have to, right? But that's no way to live. That's going to eat no. you alive. Correct. Imagine growing You're up. You see that in your dreams. And like and like still actively telling people I have no idea but deep down you know exactly yeah. what you did and you don't yeah. tell anyone. Ah, that's a horrible life to live. I don't want that for her. I really I mean, I really hope she ooh, doesn't remember. I I hope cuz it, it you're never going to be able to because come Because you got to think she also tried to take her own life. I mean, you don't do that with the idea that you two are going to survive. Mhm. You have to know how physics work. Now, I mean, you did survive, but like. You were in critical You couldn't have known that. Yeah, you couldn't have known that you were going to survive. Yeah, you had to go into that experience knowing like, there's a possibility I'm not coming out of this. Right. Wow. Correct. Mm. They also made mention in their investigation while seeking charges of McKenzie's grieving process, which I'm always a little weird about because even James brought it up. The other day, and he was like, I was, I guess, I don't remember what we were talking about, but I made a judgment. I did on someone. I was like, yeah, but why are they acting like that? Their girlfriend just blah, 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 blah. And James was like, don't do that, Brooke. Like, people grieve differently. Like, I gen, and he was like, I genuinely don't know how I would act if that happened to you. Like, I can't say that I would be hysterical. Mm -hmm. Or I can't say I would be in mummy mode and just be like, Mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, so they always talk about people grieving differently and how yeah. they'll bring it up in court and at trial and they'll be like, well, listen to the 911 call where they're not acting panic. Mm-hmm. Well, that just might be who they are. So yeah. I don't necessarily agree with them bringing this up in court about how she grieved. But mm-hmm. again, to each their own, I'm going to tell you about it. Mm-hmm. So the investigation led them to also looking into how McKenzie grieved. Mm-hmm. And it is worth noting. So after Dominic's death and McKenzie came to in the hospital and she is recovering, she started flooding his online obituary with photos and comments of the two of them. In one post made on August 24th, 2022, she shared a photo of them at Universal Studios with the caption, quote, I miss you, Nug. I still feel like you're just going to walk in the door any second. I miss your laugh and your perfect smile. Then again in August, she shared a comment saying, quote, God, you are the last person to deserve this. You had a perfect life ahead of you. I wish I had told you all this more. Please wait for me. And then she shared other photos in August of their prom pictures, them sitting on like a park bench, them in her car holding like money. I so just, she was like flooding this online obituary. I just don't know if I would have the balls to do something like that, knowing that I potentially caused this. Right. And so maybe she's doing this because she doesn't remember. But and she's people just, have told her. They have. I'm they assuming. have told her. She's, she's aware. She I'm is aware. I'm assuming she under... And granted, she can grieve him and not remember what happened to him. Right. But... I feel like me being the person I am, I would grieve in private. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, because all that's eyes just, are on you at this point. That's just how I move. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I could, you know, I could still feel bad, but I just am thinking, like, everybody's going to think mm-hmm. X, Y, yeah. and Z because essentially it looks like I am the sole cause and that I purposely did this to him. Mm-hmm. So rather mm-hmm. than put salt in the wound, I'm a, I'm agree, best believe, but all for the gram, all for mm-hmm. the obituary, to myself, mm-hmm. in my right. home, alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. with my close friends. Yeah. But that's it. Mm-mm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Now, obviously, she was not the only one grieving of the loss of these two innocent lives. So a GoFundMe was set up for the two families that lost their sons to help cover funeral expenses Mm -hmm. because no mother should have to bury their child. And it was here we heard what kind of people Dominic and Davion were. Many said that they they had so much happiness and joy to give others. They said that Dominic could light up a room instantly and he inspired so many people to better themselves in such a short amount of time. 
They went on to say that Davion was adopted into a loving family where his parents spoke about how Davion was planning on attending Barber College and wanted to one day open up his own shop. They even said that he was just a sweet person to the core and everyone's friend. Davion's adoptive father, but he claimed as his father, speaks about his how his son was full of life and was simply in the wrong place that night. Yeah, he definitely was. Mm-hmm. It just sounds like and Dominic is say, so sweet. Yes, and they were both so precious. Um, a lot of people spoke more about Davion than Dominic, but... Davion's family did actually start a scholarship fund for aspiring barbers exiting high school and wanting to go to barber school in his honor. Oh, yes. I love that. Mm-hmm. So that's um, going to be a link as well, if you would like to look into that. Wow. Now, the wreck took place in July and Mackenzie was officially arrested in no- on November 2nd, 2022. That took so long. Four months after the wreck to pl- took place. Mm. When it came to McKenzie's trial on August 7th, 2023, and her 12 charges, a bench trial was given, which means there was no jury, but conducted by a judge alone. So the judge was the jury and the senator and mm-hmm. the judge and all the things in between. Yes. Her charges included four counts of felonish assault, two aggravated vehicular homicide, one of drug possession, and one of possessing criminal tools, in addition to four counts of murder. How do you get four counts of murder? You know, I don't know. Because only two people died. Yeah. I Mm -hmm. wonder how that works. I wonder if they tried first degree and second degree. Can you do that? I don't know. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah. Because if we can't get one, maybe we'll get the other. Mm, Might as well try for both. Maybe. Yeah. Possibly. Mm -hmm. That's the best case scenario I can come up with. It sounds good to me. Yeah. Judge Nancy Margaret Russo, unrelated to Dominic Russo, remembers wrestling with the idea of giving McKenzie consecutive or co- concurrent sentences, saying, quote, I understand that the pain in this room wants me to impose the harshest sentence, but I don't believe that would be the appropriate sentence. I do believe that McKenzie won't be out in 15 years. McKenzie was sentenced at 19 years old, two years after the fateful wreck for the deaths of Dominic Russo, who was 20 at the time, and Davion Flanagan, who was 19 at the time. McKenzie did not testify during the bench trial, but before sentencing, she did decide to address the court saying the following. Quote, The families of Dominic and Davion, I'm so deeply sorry. I hope one day you can see I would never let this happen or do it on purpose. I wish I could remember what happened. Adding, quote, We were all friends. Dom was my soulmate. I wish I could take all your pain away. And to my family, thank you for the support and all the love you guys give. I love you all so much. But you were literally heard on the recording saying, I'll crash this car right now. Yeah, and she's saying, like, I was uncomfortable with what she said to the family because you not remembering is not an excuse for it not happening. Not at all. It happened. And like, you would never do this on purpose. But you did. But and so, although but, you don't remember it, you did do it. And the evidence shows that you indeed did do it. Yes. So you can't say that you wouldn't have done something like this because you did. Right. And again, you're on the recording literally saying, I'm going to crash this car right now. The night that you indeed crashed that car. Like, multiple friends heard you. Like, you, I get you don't remember. But again, not remembering is not going to take away what you did. You still need to acknowledge your fault. You were driving the car. It was your foot that pushed down on the pedal. It was seen in the video. It was seen in the recordings. It. We have all the evidence. You could have worded it differently. The choice of words were not the best. Well, and this family ended up like saying later when they left the court, they were like, 
we appreciated her apology, but we just really wish she would just admit what she did and say she's sorry. Like her sorry meant nothing because she still isn't admitting it. Like all we want, like, and I'm paraphrasing, but they basically were saying, we just want you to genuinely apologize. Like admit what you did and say you're sorry. Honestly, say you don't remember. Honestly, like I would have laid it all on the table. I know what the evidence is showing and I am so sorry that I don't remember what happened to give you the closure that you deserve. Mm -hmm. But I apologize for my fault in this Mm -hmm. because you indeed, ma'am, were at fault. Yeah. 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 However, McKenzie was not the only one who addressed the judge and the court before sentencing. The victim's families also spoke with Dominic, with Dominic's mother starting off saying, quote, Mackenzie, you are going to prison because you did this. Be thankful you're still alive and have a future, whatever that may be. Wow. She added, quote, Dom and Davion were robbed of their futures, their hopes, and their dreams. Mackenzie showed no mercy on Dominic, nor did she on Davion. Only God at this time can have mercy on her soul. Afterward, Davion's sister, who also is his biological sister, but was adopted into the same family as Davion, Yes. Oh. Said the following quote, I feel stuck. I feel like I can't move forward. I feel lost. I would like you to give Mackenzie the longest possible sentence. I've known her for about three years and she's always taken the easy way out. Once the family made their pleas with the judge, the prosecution was able to make their sentencing arguments to the judge as well, to which they simply relied on social media to do the speaking. You see, the prosecution decided to pull up multiple TikTok videos that McKenzie had made after the wreck oh. of, her, of her out at concerts, celebrating holidays, dressed up in a hotel room of a corpse for Halloween. And they were basically saying, she's not sad. She's not grieving. She does not feel remorse. However, Mackenzie's mom had discussed for this action because she claimed that those were the only times that Mackenzie went out after the wreck, and it was because her mom had pushed her to go out and try to find some normalcy again. Here's the thing. can completely understand that. can completely understand that. Mom, kudos to you for trying to get your daughter back into the real world and stop being, you know, giving her some joy in her life. Yeah. But you dressing up as a corpse yeah. for Halloween when you are yes. allegedly responsible for two deaths is it yeah. the most insensitive thing I've ever heard of. I agree. You could have been a pumpkin. You didn't even have to dress up. You didn't even have to dress up. And you chose. You was like, you know what? A dead person would be mm-hmm. the best thing for me right now. That It's, yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Kenzie girl. Not the move. Shouldn't have done it. Mm. Yeah. And then again. And I mean, like, you, like you said, her mom was trying. I'm mm-hmm. sure. I'm sure it was all innocent on the mom's part. Like, her mom was like, all Mackenzie did was mope around. I was trying to get her out. I was trying to help. And now and it's then- being thrown back in their face. And it also goes to like, here's the thing, baby. Go out and have fun. You don't have to dock. You have to think, especially knowing if you're going to go on trial because yes. you know you're going you're on trial. You're under a microscope. You you're know people are going to dig up shit. Like, you, I said shit. My bad. Yeah. You know people going <laughs> to dig up shit, okay? Yeah. You know they're going to be lurking. If you want to take these pictures, baby girl, take them and keep them for your memories. Yes. You yes. don't have to put everything on social media, baby. You don't have to... No. Pump fake for these people. You don't have to give them yeah. any ammo to work on. Uh, granted, not condoning anything. She's wrong. A hundred percent. I'm just saying the way you went about it after mm-hmm. you had done what you did. Yeah. Like, who was your counsel? Did you have any? She did. And um, the only defense that they kept saying was one, you cannot prove that she intentionally crashed the car because 
No one knows what happened in that car, not even McKenzie, because she doesn't remember. Yeah. So they were saying, you literally cannot prove this was on purpose. So you're charging her with murder, but you have no proof what happened inside that car. But all the other evidence really points to... You're Unless it. you passed out, girl. Yeah. That's the only thing that would save you, is if you passed mm-hmm. out. But based but on everything that either. that's been laid out, you saying, I, I'm going to crash this car right now. Her getting violent. out the car you and did. beating on him right before yeah. the, you know, like, yeah. All of it is looking like you it's intentionally did this. Yeah. Yeah. Judge Nancy Russo shared her own thoughts and they were not so kind. Mm. She said, quote, she had a mission and she executed it with precision. The mission was death. Adding, quote, her actions were controlled, methodical, deliberate, intentional, and purposeful. Mm -hmm. This was not reckless driving. This was murder. Judge Nancy sentenced Mackenzie Sherilla, 19 years old, to two concurrent life sentences with also the kindness of granting time served and also had her driver's license revoked for the remainder of her life. Mackenzie will serve a minimum of 15 years in prison with the possibility of parole. The judge followed her sentencing with the following statement, quote, even if McKenzie intended to die in this crash, that is irrelevant. A failed suicide attempt is not a defense for murder. Mm. And that is the case of McKenzie Sharilla. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Her mom says that they are going to immediately appeal. So they are currently working on an appeal. Um, They're going to seek new counsel because I don't think that her defense was wrong. I mean, you don't know what happened inside the car. We don't know what happened inside the car. No one knows what happened inside that car. That is is a fact. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. the defense can't say that this might have happened because then the prosecution was like, okay, well, then this might have happened. If you want to play the idea of we don't know what happened inside the car, then we need to be all factual based. I don't know. And being so factual based, you right. She's gonna she's gonna appeal. I don't know if maybe she'll go for a jury. I don't know. I don't know how mm-hmm. or what that's gonna look like for her. But she was sentenced to life. Um, they do think that she will get out at the 15-year mark unless something happens in prison because she had no other... Mm -hmm. I see that happening as well. Situations. Yeah. I do see that happening as well. She's not a repeat offender. Like, she's not a repeat offender. She's young. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel like it's a appropriate consequence for what too. was done. Well, I, I feel like the whole point, we say this all the time, the whole point is rehabilitation. Okay? You have to go for 15 years, Mackenzie. You have mm-hmm. 15 years to rehabilitate. Okay? Mm-hmm. You are 17 years old. You mm-hmm. are going to now be in your 30s. You could get out and still have a marriage kids, Mm -hmm. a life, a career, a job. Like, you can still do it. Mm -hmm. But you have to be willing to rehabilitate in prison. Mm -hmm. And not just fake it to make it. Right. Because that'll eat you alive. And please don't think that I'm cheering for her. I'm not cheering for her. But this was, you know, I don't know. I mean, could she get out? Yeah, very well might get out. Mm-hmm. Was it a loss of two innocent lives? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. And Davion's father, uh, I didn't put this in here, but his adopted father said that they did not want a life sentence for McKenzie, that they were suffering and they lost their son, but that she's young and, you know, they didn't want to see her just rot in prison. Yeah. I mean, they were like, they're, they were good people. Or they are good people. Yeah. But they did not. Now, Dominic's family, on the other hand, they wanted a very harsh sentence. Yeah. I mean, because you also have to think that they were experiencing her in a different way. 
were. than Davion was. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he was being like the mom was being verbally uh, assaulted. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dominic was being physically and verbally assaulted. They were arguing no, all the time. They were, you know, it's it's a different experience for both families. Right. Mm-hmm. So absolutely. I don't know if I'd want her to rot in there the rest of her life either. Yeah. I feel like as long as she truly does rehabilitate herself, and in the event that she remembers, like she is remorseful, Mm -hmm. truly remorseful. And I also hope that she can give the families the apology that they deserve. Yes. 100%. 100%. When she has this recollection. Because let's say, hypothetically, yes. she does remember. She can't be tried for this again. No. She can't. No. So what it is is what it is. Right. But if you remember, give them the apology they deserve. 100%. Because Davion also had no parts in this. He just happened no. to be in the car. hmm He wasn't he he the quote-unquote intended before. target. Yeah. And... The family of Davion really were annoyed at trial because they kept referring to Davion as the cargo in the back. Because, like, he wasn't her target. And they were like, Davion kind of got really overshadowed in this whole trial. Like, he died yeah. too. Like, the family was really annoyed with that. And um, Mackenzie's mom made some comment. I, it, I, I might misquote, but she was like, she said, Dominic and the other boy or something like that, right? When she was speaking. And the judge stopped her and was like, his name is Davion. As you should. Yeah. As you should, because he is a person too. And he also he was. lost his life. Yes. And granted, it is tragic for your son. Think of yes. the mother of Davion and what she is mm-hmm. now going through. Yeah. Especially yeah. knowing that he wasn't even supposed to be part no. of this. No. Not at all. He was just trying to go home. Mackenzie was his ride home. Mm-hmm. Child, I'm going to let my babies know. Call me every time. I don't care if you're yeah. drunk. I don't care if you're high. Call me every time. Because mm-hmm. mama's going to get you mm-hmm. home safe. Every time. Mm-hmm. Wow. That was crazy. Yep. So that's the case. Wow. That was... Mm. Well, thanks. Yeah. Bring New fear there. unlocked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to really preach into my children. Yeah. I feel like every case, I just add another thing to my list, another yep. life lesson I have to teach my children. Like, not a life, life, a life lesson, but like, yeah, just things I just got to make sure you know. Yeah. That you're okay. aware of. Like, that, mm-hmm. you, that you need to know. Uh, first of all, ain't no boy coming to live with us, so scratch that from That's the list. That's never going to happen. Mm-mm. That'll never happen. No. Nope. And your boyfriend's got one chance to be disrespectful, then they got to go. Yeah. And, but I, and that's why it's so important as a parent to really make sure that what your children see, because they essentially, it's not always that they mirror what they see, but a lot of things, they are very influential. A lot of things is yeah. learned behavior. So I wonder. And I'm not blaming her parents at all. Right. But you wonder like, what she saw. what was her home life like? Right. Mm-hmm. Did she witness similar things? Mm-hmm. And then grew up... Yeah. Doing those it's things. It's definitely... Well, I mean, it's definitely worth considering because, I mean, that is literally nature versus nurture. Yeah, 100%. That's, that is... Yeah. And I'm not being like, oh, it's the it's the parent. I'm not saying that. I'm just curious right. to know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To see if like, okay, or maybe things happened in her life that caused her to shift. We don't know any of this stuff. Right. We don't know why she was acting the way she was. But I'd be curious to know a little more about her life so I can make an accurate, you know, depiction mm-hmm. of who I, in my opinion, think she is. Because I right. can't give, based on what I have, Girl. Yeah, and we don't have a lot of background, so we 
We know she lived with Dominic, which I find very strange. You're mm-hmm. 17. Why are you living with your boyfriend? Yeah. Um, and why are like why are your parents just okay with this? So mm-hmm. there are definitely questions. Yeah. Um her social media, you know, my grandmother sees my social media. Like I'm not you're posting pictures of joints. Your parents aren't saying anything about that. Mm-hmm. Like that's not concerning to them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's a little weird. It just I got a lot of questions. I would like to know. Yeah. So, yeah. No. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'll never get them. That's fine. But you know, a girl is curious. She's curious. Yeah. I need to know. Well, it's time yeah. for us to head on out of here because it is surprise, Gotta surprise. I still haven't had dinner, so I need to go eat. Ooh, yeah. It's 11.07, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> go eat some dinner. I'm going to eat some zen zen and you're going to go to mm-hmm. sleep sleep and we'll I see am. you next time time. Yep. So as always, the bell don't dismiss you. We do. So we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.